thank you each and every one of you for being here you've you know entrusted me with this these next half an hour or so and i hope that whatever i communicate today will indeed be life changing okay so i'm going to start sharing a ppt i always use i tend to use ppts because i think there's so much information coming and uh, it might help you if it might even help you if you have a pen and paper so um, go ahead well done ellie i'll just give me a second okay okay so here we go this is our topic for today relational dynamics and as lasse rightly pointed out life is all about relational dynamics what does it mean it means different ways in which we relate with people uh, depending on who they are what our equation is with them and also on whether i am responding or reacting to what is going on uh, in my life relational dynamics as the title suggests that it is dynamic which means it is constantly changing but why is it changing how is it changing uh we will look at that a little more now in every relationship our goal is our goal is connection i'm just been told i need to speak louder okay our goal is connection why because relationships is about talking to people you don't have a relationship unless you are engaging with someone verbally okay that's a core part of relationships and uh, to understand circles of of relationships or networks or different clusters of relationships that we have we need to recognize how we respond to situations and people around us and another way of putting it is do we live from the outside in or do i live from the inside out okay what does this mean what does this mean okay let's look at that now when i live from the outside in it means that i am triggered by outside events they affect how i think how i th- and that affects the, my perspective my perspective affects therefore how i feel and then you know based on how we feel we react that is an out that is an outside in perspective where there's a trigger and i am reacting whereas an inside out perspective a way of living is things happen around me but i am guided by core thoughts core beliefs those things change the way i look at the circumstance around me my perspective and so i am in control of how i am thinking how i am feeling and therefore how i respond i i am sure by now you've noticed there are two words i'm using there's react and there's respond okay and we want to aim to learn to respond rather than react so we can live from outside in or inside out in any relationship we can show up as powerful or powerless okay as powerful or powerless what is what do i mean by this do i mean that you you are a, a dominating person a person who wants to be overbearing no it simply means that a powerful person is somebody who makes choices based on an inner compass inner set of core beliefs or values rather than reacting to or being controlled by others or external circumstances this person is a person who is in charge of their emotions in charge of how they react a powerful person or a respond a powerful person or an inside out person can make right decisions no matter what the circumstances are around them they are not controlled by things going on or by what people say or what by people do or don't do so our goal in all our relationships 
is to make choices based on an inner compass rather than reacting. Now there are two types of people, okay? two types of people, the powerless person like I said who works from the outside in paradigm or the powerful person that works from the inside out paradigm. And we are going to look at what do these two people, uh, kinds of people look like and when we are looking at this I would like you to think about yourself. Now let me say this, none of us are totally powerful and none of us are totally powerless but there are different times and different percentages you can say in which we interact and engage with people. In some situations we become very powerless, in some situations we are more powerful than in others. Let us look at some character characteristics so that we can recognize our own behavior patterns. Okay? So let us look at the powerless person who lives from the outside in paradigm. Often these people are a very afraid of conflict and so there is a lot of anxiety inside of them. They are scared, um, you know, and because they are scared, they need to control what is happening around them. They will often get angry when they do not get their way. And let me tell you, anger is fake power. Often when people are angry, actually they are very scared and they are very insecure and then they put up this thing of anger in order to get people to do what they want them to do. Because people feel powerless, they feel the need to manipulate. So they manipulate people, they manipulate conversations, they man try and manipulate circumstances and the, the reason being because they want to stay in control. They feel if they do not manipulate, they are going to lose control over everything around them. They do not have confidence in the relationship currency that they have or the equation that they have with people. And it is not so obvious what powerless people look like. Powerless people can also, you know, when they are upset, can give you the silent treatment and control cloaks itself in many ways. Powerless people often do not tell you the truth very well. Why? Because they are people pleasers. They do not want to upset you. Remember I said they are afraid of conflict. So they are not going to tell you if they are upset or there is something they do not like about what you did or what you said. They, are, they can like I said they get angry and then they blame and they will often use this language. You do this, you do that, you did this, you did that, you make me do this, you make me happy, you make me glad, you make me mad, you made me sad. And so they are constantly blaming someone else for their reactions. They will always often make passive statements or irresponsible statements like I will try. Have you heard of people who have said, hey will you uh, come to my house for tea? I will try. Actually they mean I will not but they are too afraid of speaking the truth so they use words like I will try. There is not no I will try either I will or I will not. Like, you know, um, what happens is like they will also make passive statements apart from I'll try like they will say oh I can't do it or I should or I won't or uh, uh, I'm unable to it's almost like as though there is something else controlling this person and it's they need someone to manage their emotions so they'll always say hey you know what you did really made me upset wow is that person that powerful you know, you allowed yourself to get upset. Now this is a major paradigm shift because we say, but they said something rude and so I got angry. And we are going to look at a little more at where do our emotions flow from. You know, they live by, I, I use this phrase, you know, greater is the person outside there than what is going on inside me and the charge that I have over my own emotions. So powerless people expect others to manage their happiness and they have a victim mindset. So they feel whenever there is a problem, they feel, oh, they are doing this to me. Why does this always happen to me? Why am I always in problems? Why are they always treating me like this? And they tend to have a victim mindset and therefore tend to blame others for all their problems. Uh, powerless people given for the sake of peace. 
and sometimes they can give in for the sake of peace for a long time even years even years powerless people even expect people to read their minds because they won't be open and they feel don't you know what i'm thinking no i don't you need to tell me you need to use words but they expect people to be mind readers and their entire life is a reaction powerless people so this is these are some characteristics of a powerless person now let's look at what does a powerful person look like a person who lives from an inside out paradigm okay a powerful person like i said lives life in response rather than react they respond rather than react they set limits with disrespectful people so they don't tolerate nonsense they are not doormats so if someone is shouting at them all the time they'll say hey hold it can we talk respectfully or till you calm down or till you get control over your emotions let's take a time out let's talk in an hour's time or two hours time or let's talk when you calm down so they don't allow people to be abusive to toward them in verbally and certainly not physically okay they manage themselves regardless of what other people do they take responsibility for their own thoughts feelings and actions they don't say he made me ha- sad he made me glad he made me mad they take responsibility for the way the way they feel so they will communicate not with you 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 statements they communicate with i statements they'll say i was upset when you did not come on time they don't say you made me upset because you didn't come on time i got upset and i am i am disappointed or i am angry or i am not happy about your late coming just for to give you an example so they live from inside out and therefore they are not victims of their circumstances they take charge they know how to re- respond and they respond appropriately to the situation or to the, to the person in front of them they have healthy boundaries and they manage their choices okay um they can direct their own life and vision because they have a mindset that gives them the ability to manage themselves so you know because victims what happens is their mind shuts down and their mind shuts down to um what would you say solutions they just can't think solutions because they are in this victim mode where they say help 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 i need somebody to rescue me whereas the powerful person says okay so this is not working what choices do i have before me what can i do what are the options before me what are the alternatives and that opens up your mind to thinking solutions okay so we've looked at what powerful and powerless people look like now what happens when these two people start um engaging with each other okay and i'm going to show you three kinds of engagement when powerful and powerless people start interacting with each other and we've got powerful and powerless people in our lives right all the time maybe they're in family maybe they're neighbors maybe it's at work school colleagues wherever let's look at what these three kinds of um, engagement look like so we have the first one where you have a powerless and a powerless person engaging each other then you have the powerful and a powerless person engaging the, each other and then you have a powerful and a powerful person engaging each other let's look at each one okay the powerless powerless dynamic what does this look like here when two powerless people engage each other they both try to control each other and so both are manipulating each other and there's a lot of anxiety in this relationship because nobody knows exactly what's going to happen and each one is trying to mind read and outwit the other and their whole life is based on a reaction so 
their responses are dependent on how you behave with them so if you're nice I'll be nice if you're angry with me I'll be angry with you and one person can become very servile in this relationship because they're afraid of conflict and you know they may appear like they're keeping the peace but actually they're not they're not it appears noble but what is happening is really they are tolerating a whole lot of things that they should never have tolerated they get angry and they want to control people okay like I said there's a lot of anxiety and they're dependent on others for happiness and both avoid conflict and the issues unfortunately stay in unresolved for a long long time and sometimes when they, are st they stay unresolved for such a long time they just then it's like a volcano it just blows up and it can blow up over a very small issue and you say my goodness why did she get so upset but actually she's not just upset because of today's things it's because of a whole lot of pent up issues okay and so they can all so use passive aggressive behavior what do I mean by this they don't directly tell you they're upset with you they just block you they don't talk to you or they just ignore things that you say to them and th that is called there's a lot about passive aggressive behavior but we don't have the time to get into this then we have the powerful and the powerless dynamic and here this creates a lot of dependency because what happens is the powerful person is always in rescue mode rescuing the powerless person who feels like a victim and the powerful person feels they are being helpful by rescuing this person okay the powerful person will pick up the ball of all the irresponsible behavior of the powerless person so when the powerless person doesn't finish their job doesn't finish it well or leaves it incomplete the powerful person steps in and completes it now small tip to parents when we give instructions to children you know we say hey when you finish studying clear the table take your books put them away put it in your bag so that we can get ready for dinner for example and the child doesn't do it la 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 and they go playing they're playing on their phone they're playing and they're doing this Ajit come on put away your books put away yeah yeah da la 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 da 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 la la Ajit put away your books and Ajit doesn't put away his books and then it's time up or he hasn't put away his books he hasn't put his books in in his bag according to timetable this was in pre lockdown days and he goes to there's a danger of him going to school without the right books and what does mama do powerful mama comes to the rescue looks at the timetable and puts the right books in the bag what have you just done you have taught this child that I don't need to be responsible someone else is going to pick up the ball that I drop and they grow up as adults expecting others to pick up after them so has mama really been helpful think about that okay has mama been helpful or a colleague doesn't finish the project doesn't finish their part of the project in time and the team lead is feeling under pressure to step in and do the job what have you taught what have you just educated this person in you've just educated this person in being irresponsible and this person will continue to being ir to be irresponsible irresponsible because you just rewarded irresponsible behavior by picking up the ball but when you let the ball drop and you let the person who is irresponsible feel the consequences of their choices then hopefully the next time they won't do it possibly that adult who is being irresponsible had a mama who packed his bag every day when he went he or she went to school and so they never learned the consequences of their irresponsibility so what if they don't take the book I have done it so what they'll get a remark in their calendar let them face the consequences much better a remark in the calendar when they're 10 years old than when they're at a job 
and then they get a memo or a warning letter saying you are underperforming. Which one would you prefer for your child? I will go with the remark in the calendar. Teach them to be responsible at 10 and then they will be responsible at 30. Teach them to be irresponsible at 10 and you have just rewarded him with irresponsible behavior and they will continue to do it when they are 30. I've labored this point because I think many people face this especially at work. The powerless person, like I said, behaves like the victim and the powerful plays the valiant rescuer. The powerful person works harder on the relationship than the powerful person. And this can be in relationships where the powerful person is constantly reminding the other person, hey, you're supposed to, you're supposed to pay the electricity bill today. Hey, you're supposed to pick up the vegetables today. Hey, you know, routine work, routine things that the other person is responsible. And all the time, the powerful person is being like your diary and your manager. And, and what happens, and you're not going to like this, especially when it comes to adults, or it can be in a marriage, there is only one adult in the relationship. The other person behaves like a child. So it becomes like a parent-child relationship where one is constantly being the mama coming to the rescue. And we don't want to be in this dynamic. Then we have the powerful, powerful dynamic. And this is where we all want to be, where both are adults and both are behaving ir uh, responsibly. They respect the other person, they respect themselves, and they respect the responsibilities that they carry. They both carry their responsibilities and therefore create a free space for everyone. They manage their emotions and therefore they can be themselves around people. Powerful people can disclose how they're feeling. You know, both are in charge. Yeah, I've already said that, sorry. You know, they can, they can uh, disclose how they're feeling. They're not afraid of speaking the truth. They are not controlled by someone else's character flaws or defects. They take responsibility for their decisions. Being powerful means you can be honest and you can be vulnerable. Both can, don't use powerless statements or weak or passive statements. They will say, either say, I can do it or I can't do it. I'll do it or I'm so sorry, I won't be able to do it. But they will not say, I'll try, I'll think about it. Their yes is a yes and their no is a no, okay? Um, also, they live with integrity, okay? They are, respe they are respectful and respons responsible for all their relationships. Okay, so I think um, let's take a break here and we are going to do have a few uh, questions to recap, okay, to see how much do we remember. And I'm just going to stop sharing the screen and uh, last year is going to just lead us with some questions. All right, wasn't that good? Yeah, I'm sure all of us could have could identify some of those characteristics in ourselves, whether it's powerful or powerless. And uh, it's helpful for us to know also those different dynamics. So let's just uh, review this first half with some quiz questions. Now, just like the first um, uh, questions quiz that we did, only put in the um, chat the options one, two, three or four. OK, so can we see the first question, please? Let's see. OK. The first question is, we can live from, and the options are, okay, first is upside down, two, inside out, three, this side, that side, or four, your side, my side. Okay, put in your, yeah, I see a lot of people think two, Sumita says four, Chayan says two. Joshua, Shana, Adia, two. Okay, let's see what's the answer. It's two. Congratulations, guys. Yeah, that's absolutely right. We can live from inside out. Yeah, that is that is the powerful response. Okay, let's see another question. Okay, uh, second question is, our goal is to, and the options are, 
what is our goal our goal is to allow others to dictate our lives or two to control the outcome three to live from an inner compass or four let life just happen okay what do you think druti tanishka gargi oh my gosh yes i think most of them have said three a uh, couple of said two control the outcome okay and the answer is three that's right absolutely correct okay three our goal is that we are able to live from an inner compass not controlled by our situations or not wanting to or having to control the outcome of everything yeah uh, let's go on to question number 3 next question okay the powerless person lives from a and what are the options Okay here we have two options first is an inside out paradigm or an outside in paradigm answer with options 1 or 2 in the chat Okay we see a lot of twos so he's saying that it, powerless person lives from an outside in paradigm and the answer is the the powerless person lives from a I think that I think there's a mistake but you guys got it yeah it's it's an it's an outside in paradigm that's absolutely right your eye is on the ball okay so you guys got it that's right okay let's do one more question okay before we go back uh which is a healthy dynamic let's see what are the options the first option is powerful powerless dynamic or a powerless powerless dynamic or a powerful powerful dynamic Okay and I see all of them responding three yeah Joshua Fanny Galaxy A20 Avicii all right okay everyone saying three so we were pretty unanimous in that and let's see the answer all right that's absolutely right okay the the healthy dynamic what we are aiming towards is a powerful powerful dynamic wonderful that's that's excellent guys i think you guys have uh, got it now get ready for part 2 and uh, let's welcome navas back in and uh, while she is going through the part 2 i will encourage you guys if you have any questions and i know there's a lot of stuff in here if you have any questions feel free to post it in the chat and we'll uh, take up one or two questions towards the end and answer it okay all right over to you navas great sorry for that uh, mess up there okay uh, so we've looked at powerful powerless all the dynamics so the question we ask is how do we become powerful how do we become powerful okay we need to know what is in our circle of control like i said our emotions come from within us we we'll look at that what am I, so we i'd like to suggest imagine you've got three circles around you okay concentric circles you need to know what are you responsible for and you are responsible for your thoughts your feelings your actions that's in your inner circle that's inside that's where your compass is okay you need to know what you have partial control over and then most importantly you need to know what you have absolutely no control over okay we're going to look at these circles that's you in the middle and like i said all your emotions are inside of you angry sad happy frustrated impatient you know when you're rude you're disappointed who have put god in there okay and let's look at this partial control is our health our job our finance our education and i've put health and job little bit in little bit out you know like take covid how many of us have had control over it yes i can take my jabs i can wear my mask i can do all of that which i did and i got covid you know so some things were in my control and some things were just not in my control but look at the outer circle okay can you see it's mostly got to do with people and relationships okay my friends are not in my control my boss is not in my control my the prime minister is not in my control neither are my wife my kids and i put some other things there that may not be relevant for today you know and then there's your friend there 
with all their emotions in their circle. And sometimes what happens is when we have a powerless, powerless dynamic or we have a powerful and a powerless dynamic, we get this which is out of control because now I'm into your emotions and you are into my emotions and you know I feel responsible for your happiness I feel you've made me frustrated I feel oh my god I better be careful or he will get angry and can you see the mashup that happens and this my friends is not where we want to be let's look at how do powerless people some of the ways in which powerless deal people deal with problems we looked at some things but I'm going to show you it like say it, if there is an actual situation you may come across one of these seven responses okay based on whether they you know whether they act out in anger or they're being defensive or they are blaming or whatever let's look at it okay one of the things they can say is when there is a problem they'll say what's your problem huh what's it got to do with you and they kind of shoot the what we call shoot the messenger the trigger is not so much that they don't like the problem but that you are bringing up the problem the fact that you bring up the problem they will respond with what's your problem another way they may respond is you know the problem actually is and they will try and rationalize it people may create reasons for their behavior that satisfy themselves but are inaccurate and the whole aim is to reduce their responsibility uh, for the problem they will they sometimes may even deny that the problem exists and so they will say oh come on yeah don't make such a big deal about it it's not such a big problem and so they will try and minimize the actual issue you know they will <coughs> they'll say come on come on it wasn't that it wasn't so bad huh? come on it wasn't so bad don't make such a big deal then they'll say another way they'll respond is they are the problem and that is the blame game you know it wasn't me if they had just been kind no I would not have behaved in this manner if she had just been respectful no towards me I would not have been rude to her she is the problem and so they play the blame game the other one they'll say what problem there's no problem Kaan, problem kidhar hai yaar? there's no problem and so they're in denial okay some people just deny that the problem exists because they don't want to face up to their responsibility the other thing they will do is you're always causing a problem you always cause a problem and really what they're doing is they don't allow themselves they disallow their own uh, that they, they don't want to take responsibility for their behavior and so they project it on to other people okay they're unable to tolerate the bad thing within them actually it they know they've done it but they will put it on someone else okay the other way a person will respond is using all of the above where they say the whole world is against me all you guys here all the time y'all are picking on me there's not and there's no problem y'all are saying there's a problem then you're saying i'm the problem and i'm telling you there's no problem what's your problem actually the problem is that they are the problem do you see what they've done and so they sidestep and you can never come to a resolution to a conflict with this person so what do you do what do you do what can you do to stay in your circle to stay in control of your emotions and your responses you know if the powerless person does not take responsibility for the way that they are behaving or, or thinking or speaking here are some things that you can do communicate clearly what is it you don't like about what they've said or what or their behavior set boundaries you know ask questions rather than accuse them if you come at them in an accusing tone hundred percent they are going to get defensive they're going to deny they're going to blame they're going to deflect 
they are going to do all these things. So, just ask a question. So, supposing they are you know I'll, I'll, uh, persistently late, say hey you know help me understand but uh, why, why is it that uh, you are unable to come on time rather than say why are you always late here, you are always keeping me waiting. You are not going to get a good response to that. You say, but you ask, so was there a problem? You know, um, what time did you get the bus? And you will be able to probably come to a solution easier. Make your expectations clear. Listen, I'd like you to give me this report by uh, tomorrow evening at four o'clock. Clear expectation. No, give it to me when you finish. Oh, the guy will take ten days to finish the job. Okay. Make your expectations clear. Collaborate. Don't take over. Because if you take over, if you rescue him once, you'll have to rescue him again. Maybe you can help a little bit, but don't take over the job. Don't do for others what they can do for themselves. Okay. And here the question you could ask in the situation is. Are they unable to do it? Do they lack the skills um, or are they unwilling? Do you see the difference? Are they unable or are they unwilling? Don't do for others what they can do for themselves. Listen without taking the load. Okay, we do a whole thing on listening. We do a whole uh, teaching on uh, listening, a seminar on listening, on empathy, but without taking on the responsibility. So, you, you listen, you, you empathize, you probably ask some helpful questions and you give them the support they need rather than rescue. Okay? Allow them to think for themselves because when people, I have noticed when you allow people to think for themselves, they come up with solutions that they then own rather than feeling like you have imposed something on them. So, you ask them questions. So, what do you think you can do about it? Because people sometimes are lazy, they do not want to think. So, ask them, what do you think you can do about this? And they say, okay, yeah, I think I need to get up an hour earlier, I need to take the earlier bus. You know? So, now what has happened? They have owned or they have taken responsibility for their lack of punctuality. How can you change powerless behavior? Okay? Uh, if you are a person who is constantly dropping the ball and you say, yeah, you know, I have always wanted a mama to rescue me all the time, here are some of the things you can do. Learn to keep your commitments and follow through. Okay? Look for healthy ways to express your need rather than manipulate people or use anger. I oh, am so tired, you don't know how what I am feeling, you know. No, no, no. Or saying, Are, nobody helps me, nobody is bothered about what I am feeling. These are all manipulative statements. Just say, hey guys, I need some help. Do you think you can help me with this? Yeah. Acknowledge your own strengths and limitations. Know what you are capable of and what you are not capable of and communicate that to when, especially when you have been given a responsibility. Say, hey, you know, actually I do not know how to do this. Rather than keep the whole team waiting right to the end, you drop the ball, you keep quiet about the fact you don't know how to do it, others are picking it up and this cycle, drama cycle continues to go on and on. Find ways of addressing conflict in a healthy way rather than sweeping it under the carpet. Okay? Because it does not buy peace, you just build a volcano that one day will erupt. Stop blaming others and take responsibility for how you think, feel and act. Okay? I am upset because of this, this and this. You are taking responsibility and that is why I behaved the way I did. I should not have but you know, I am sorry. So, you take responsibility for your feelings, you take responsibility for the way you behaved. And when we do this, we will change our powerless behaviors and we will learn to become more healthier in, in our interactions and learn to become more powerful. Okay? Thank you and we are done. Just to let you know if some of you are interested 
in uh, more on this topic, here are some of the resources I have used. I have used a lot of resources, but here are some resources that I think that will help you. Okay? There is Dr. Henry Cloud, Boundaries and he's even got a YouTube channel. There is Danny Silk who has written a fantastic book called Keep Your Love On which is talking about keeping connection and there is Chip Judd as well on Boundaries. Thank you.